I'm Rob Lacuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby, here with production designer Mark Tildesley, who is one of the artisans who brought the Banshees of Inner Sharon to life. Um, Mark, there's a palpable dread, a dread and melancholy that permeates this film, and I found that, you know, that sadness, confusion, emptiness, often, um, you know, that comes with an end of a relationship, really, really compelling. Um, I just wonder how those themes informed the look and feel of the film, you know, overall. Yes, yeah, so so um, uh, so Martin had written the 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 mine's written a number of of stories and plays based in the west coast of Ireland. His um, plays, um, the Beauty Queen of Leanne and various things. So he he was very familiar with that world, and his folks lived there. And in fact, um, he spent a bit of time there as a child, and in fact, been back recently. And it, it was his idea to start looking. Uh, for our, we were going to make this island up, um, but anyway, he thought that the best place to start would be on the on the Aran Islands, yeah, which are just off the coast of the Galway, uh, which are a thirty five minute boat ride or a seven minute plane ride, depending if you want to take your life in your hands. But um, the uh, but both <laughs> both quite difficult. Anyway, so I'd never been to either of these. I'm I'm I've got Irish heritage ancestry in that, but I'd never really been that far west, and so I was really excited to see see how it looked. And, and when you look them up, I mean, these are basically just r rocks in the middle of the sea. And that's what, yeah. they, that's what they are. But they're extraordinary in, in a strange way because, you know, they're extremely ancient. They've got incredible monuments on them that were built, you know, Iron Age monuments and early, early, um, early, early historical monuments. And then you wonder what the connection is. And then you realise that, you know, back in the day, there was lots of connections from Europe on the trading winds coming up the coast there. So um, so it's quite an interesting place, historically quite exotic in a way. Anyway, so it's, it's you know, one of the opening sequences of the film, you see a flyover of the island and you'll, you see, it's basically like a set of patchwork stone walls, very small little um, fields. And it's built like that because it's so, so devastatingly windy that they, they had to, in order for them to keep crops and things from blowing away. They had to build these super high windbreak walls. Yeah, So you get this extraordinary medieval structure of this sort of uh, patchwork quilt of fields and stuff. And and, and it's super rocky. And, and that felt really good in a way for the world of Porik and Siobhan, which is a, a world grounded in the rock, grounded in the, in, the, in the ground, in the island, and somewhere where he didn't feel like he'd ever need to leave. And you know, um, as opposed to later on in the film, we get into the Columns House, which was built on a different part, um, which is actually up the coast, another island. But um, that's much more romantic and in a way is a sort of more beautiful, uh, almost like a sort of Friedrich painting where Colum dreams and makes his art and his poetry and his thoughts, you know, which, which just distinguishes the two. So one slightly more grounded and rocky and hard, grounded staying on the island and then the dreamers the people that wanted to be gone and that's i suppose why in, in one of the reasons for don't want to explain it away why colin has the sadness and can't cope with porig because he just feels there's too many good things to be doing so we we yeah. got his house on, on amazing cove right which faces america the next stop when you look out of his window is america so he's dreaming yeah. of you know 1920s america jazz you know all these influences and so we we wanted to sort of try and make a slight distinction between those two two worlds um so that's where that's where we started so we ended up on the Aran islands building porrick's house we couldn't find any period houses that worked for us and they're so simple in a way they're these long houses built in sections and in order for us to film inside that and in order for ben the dop to 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 have access to the weather which is one of the reasons we wanted to make it a, a film about about the landscape and about the weather and about the place. So we decided to go and build on location and shoot interior, exterior for real. No studio work at all. No. Wow. So it's like sort of in a, in a way we, we reference things like uh, the great John Ford Westerns and stuff like that. And a, a lot of shots in doorways that look out to views and images beyond going. And then there's views out of the window. You know, there's a views out of the window from the pub, from inside the pub to outside the pub. These connections to the real world, and then looking out across the vista of what was possible 
you know, at that pub, you're looking at again, just it's <coughs> across the Atlantic Ocean, you know, towards America. So yeah. there's, there's those sort of themes going on. And then, um, uh, yeah, so we, so we, 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 um, yeah, we ended up building a, a little bit more than we intended. We built, we built Corey's house for real. Um, yeah, and it really did work for us. I mean, it meant that we could literally get outside if we wanted to go and grab the rainbow or the sunshine or whatever. I mean, the really strange thing is that we built on the most savage. Uh, these the, the weather was terrifying while I was building, and as soon as the as soon as Martin turned up with the actors, it was bright and sunny for the whole time. Gosh. So it was like what were you complaining about. But 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 the, the where we built the pub is is actually the name of the road is called the Wild Atlantic Way, and it is called that because it's wild and you know we we were sometimes hit the pub was hit from the sea with waves showered with really sea. yeah wow. i mean it was really really it really something um wow anyway so, so um yeah and then porry's house there was already a a small cottage existing on that cove yeah. and um a very really ancient um is a when i say a whaling cottage it, it was a fishing cottage and they they used to fish for basking sharks which are like 25 foot long harmless sharks nevertheless they're, they're plentiful off that coast and that that was a fishing cottage owned by a family so the task there was really to get the owner who's had it for in his family for hundreds of years to allow us to burn it in some way or other so in the end we we had to skin that house with our own one on top yeah so that so that we could um uh yeah, we, we basically built a fireproof skin over the top of it and then set fire to it. Unbelievable. Um, like, he, he was cool. The guy was really cool. I mean, he, he trusted us. <laughs> yeah, that's a <laughs> lot. Was a bit nervous for a few, few moments, I was thinking. You know, it was, anyway, it was very controlled, gas fires, but still yeah. it looked savage. And, but, um, yeah. you know, we set fire to the to a, um, to the to the roof, which was which was thatch, real thatch. Yeah. Um, so it really went up. Um, but anyway. <laughs> How heartbreaking. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. So, I, you know what? I I had no idea when I first saw the film, because I've seen it a couple of times now, that there was so much constructed. Because a lot of films like this, you find a location, as you kind of implied, you shoot in it, you leave, you get permissions and so forth. You built so yeah. much stuff here, and Pori and Siobhan's house just feels to me so authentic and rustic and you know the stone it's very opaque it's very stuffy and airless and um i, I was wondering I, I when i spoke to ben the dp you know just wondering how you shoot in something like that you know how you light it properly so how much collaboration do you need to do with um yeah. to make that work we had a really good time because it was covid so when we arrived in Ireland, we were all locked myself ben martin and Peter Cole, the DOP, uh, the first AD, were all locked in in a cottage off uh, in Galway for three or three weeks. So we went daily, uh, uh, you know, like monastically through the storyboards, um, which Martin has scribbled. And, and they're you know stick drawings, and they're not super elaborate, but they tell the story. And so we already had a really before we left on our adventures to look for stuff, we already had a really strong idea about what we had to achieve you know there was there were you know as you say take that pub you know we needed you know we needed the window which had the relationship between the table the bar and the outside table yeah. and the door so you know you already know all those things they're all in the storyboard so you're starting to construct around around those shots and and and, and, and you know porrigs uh, uh, in in the bedroom you know we wanted it to feel like they were forced into this sh tiny space together so that there was this terrible loss when she left it you know, so when when he's left alone in that room of the animals at the end of the bed, it's terribly sad when he he he's wishing she was there and she writes to him. So so there were there were those were all in a in a board and we 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 looked at those things and we studied some films and we looked at a Night of the Hunter and its relationship with animals and a slight weird folklore uh, and, and almost strangely. There's something quite theatrical about Night of the Hunter, and we weren't too frightened of, of, of pushing that, you know. That I don't know that it's necessarily that we're, we're making a conventional looking film. We're making it almost like some sort of folklore piece. It yeah. feels more like Shakespearean, 
piece to me. You know, the way that the, the between the cinematography, everything is slightly stripped back and honest. And there's not a lot of heavy camera moves and there's not a lot of fancy music or sound effects or anything. It's yeah. just like people's eyes, faces, you know, yeah. um, and, and the words, which I, I think are, the dialect is really quite something, you know, when, when they're in the pub. And it really feels to me that that saying in the pub where he says, uh, um, they say to him, uh, you know, um, uh, I can't remember what it is, but they re they repeat themselves the two old boys. Yeah, they're like, is he rowing? No, am, am yeah, I is rowing? Are you rowing? Are you I'm rowing? rowing. Oh my it's god, just, it's so good. It's like, it's like a Shakespeare play, then you know, it's yeah. like the chorus of the play where where Martin really rhymes and uses the words again and sim and in a simple way, and it's very poignant, you know. Yeah, but it is slightly lifted. It's almost Pinteresque, or yes, I don't know something about it that's that's um that's unusual, that, which yes. I. Is the great quality of the film is its simplicity in a way, and that's Absolutely. what you say about the set. You don't really want anything fanciful. You want something just uh, you know. I mean, in the pub, the only thing in the pub was we we decided we wanted to make it long, you know, so that it felt like that Western idea of people at either ends of a room trapped. You know, it didn't quite work, but it was it was quite long that bar considering. Yeah, it um, was. It we, was the things we. So there was there were there was that thing, and then we knew when when. We knew that one side of that pub on one position was Porrigs, and you know, and once the row kicked in, the other was Collins, and so there was like there's this, this division between the two worlds. Yeah, and it doesn't always work out this, but that's that's all coming from the sort of storyboards and planning. Yeah, so it just makes it really makes your life quite simple as a designer you, when you when people are properly prepared like that. You just actually you, you just then you can tweak and lift it and, and yeah. hone it in and make feel good uh, that, and you're that, right everything in those things the, the stone was real stone the floors we brought real stone floors in everything was made from old if you look at the timbers they're really old reclaimed timbers we found old wood and built we didn't buy new wood and paint it we found old timbers all the doors we found on the island we went down and there was a guy called mickey the door who, who got all the reclaimed doors from the old cottages so we borrowed those bought yeah. some of them and, and use those so that everything already had slight patina in it and a sort of age to start with. Yeah. So um, yeah. I'm thinking, so you know, you mentioned those stone fences to me, it, it may, Oh God, it's so striking with, uh, with the em emerald green of the grass. And it felt like an old civilization had crumbled away. And that's, that even made it even more um, melancholy. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, the longing that Siobhan has when she's looking across the sea. Um, I, we're kind of running out of time, but I'm fascinated about the color palette because I'm expecting oh, desaturated okay. monochrome. Yeah. We don't get that. Yeah. Ema's yeah. costume design is so beautiful. Yeah. Your yeah, that, the, the mustard color, I think, in Colm's apart, um, yeah. house yeah. and all the yeah. esoterica that he has in his uh, in his uh, yeah. house. I, I, my eyes were darting around trying to find out what they yeah. were. What was behind yeah. all those choices? Yeah, so 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 as I said, so the challenge from Martin was not to make was was not to make a period film as such. You know, again, we're not making a modern movie, but we're making a this is a sort of a world that floats just above. It's a theatrical world, yeah. And yes. so he's saying, let's just go for colour. And and in fact, as I said, we, we looked into a bit of the original colour uh, from a couple of exhibitions and, and there are some amazing original indigo blues, there's a deep blood red, and there's a, a buttercup yellow. Um, so, you know, you, you have these strong colours. And when you look at the original costuming of the island, it, it's almost, it's, it's very folkloric. It almost looks mm -hmm. like, um, but, but Martin didn't want to do the traditional thing. And, and so, so, for instance, you know, uh, Siobhan's um, coat, yellow coat, is, is bright yellow, strong mustard yellow. And the, so, and that's a sort of, again, that's, a, that's an, an idea of what's going on in the world outside of this stone place, of this green stone rock, you know. Uh, and, and again, the washing on the line, you know, we, 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 we made sure that, that really just in a good glance is overdone, but it's, it's trying to reflect something of, uh, of colour. So, you know, you're not just into that dreary immediate thing of you're watching a, a period thing, because you, you, the, the problem with period work is that you're looking at black and white photos most of the time. So yeah. you inevitably get into that look and you think, oh, that makes it look old, but it's not. There's lots of colour in the world. So and in fact. I don't know. I'm, I'm dodgy waters this, but I think in that part of Ireland there were some extraordinary colours. I mean, they're much more from the sixties and seventies. But nevertheless, people love colour, and I think it might just be the case of wanting to brighten things up. Yeah, you know, like that store. I want to get a little 
paint the on emerald it. green of that store and you know the ladies painting it at the end of the film um yeah i, yeah. I, I thought the, that was a nice yeah, that, that the touch on that was that that's the that's the the revolution so so that was there's old red english turned into independent irish so the yes. green was her turning that around so we did that that was an idea we had and we just did it we thought we just keep it in the background don't make too much of it just have a little bit of green paint going on there yeah um it. yeah and then there was a sort of coding to all the doors so there was the white and then the red doors of porig's um column's house and then the green on the white the green doors of, of porig's and chauvin's cottage yeah so we wanted to have sort of strong emblematic colors that you you know because actually the cottage is a lot very similar out there all lots of white cottages so you get yeah here's a that's our green color for him and that's a splash of red and then we, we went mad on the van gogh inside inside column's house because we just that that is a great color of madness you know and it, it's sort of and, and and we even we even did a little homage by hanging a, a chair on the wall a little like a van gogh chair on the wall in the coach as you come in so there's a few hints towards various things but just fun really and, and yeah. not getting too too stuffy with it um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So then you you go from early nineteen twenties Ireland to nineteen eighties um, in yeah. the south of England. Um, two recognizable periods. You know, you, you work on Empire of Light for Sam Mendes, um, another remote seaside town, but a lot more internals in the cinema. There's some beautiful work that you've done in that film too. What was the brief from Sam um, in creating a look and feel for Empire of Light? Yeah, so so uh, Empire of Light. So it's, it's Sam's uh, personal story that he wrote when he was locked down wondering where we'd ever get back in the cinema again or get the opportunity to go to the theater at one time so um and it's um so it's a journey that sam knew very well set in 1980s when he was a young lad it's sort of semi-biographical partly to do with his relationship with his mother uh mental health and other issues and 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 um so when when sam originally wrote that he wrote that to be on the south coast of england which is where you know this shot brighton rock and it's classic sort of neoclassic white stucco victorian but it's so overused and in a way very hard to find uh, a real old cinema that's on the seafront because the first line of the script is she's opening up the doors in the frosty morning in the in the glass of the doorway you see the sea reflected so the relationship with the sea is really important so we're looking for this cinema it's like some gold dust now to find something <laughs> period that's on the front anyway someone suggested to us why don't you go further east that get out and so when we went, we went up to margate this town called margate yeah. which is on the southeast coast it's where turner painted his pictures and it has an extraordinary um the light there is absolutely sensational. Yeah, um, it drops down in the east, and, and and Roger Deakin was really excited about that prospect. Uh, so so we we went, and yeah, there was this wonderful bay of sand, which was very contained. And at the end of one of the of the bay of sand was a um, an old cinema called Dreamlands, which is derelict and disused as part of an old fun fair. And that's a sort of real Art Deco cinema classic. The tall tower and lovely curves and we just thought well that's great because that is not at all quaint and english it's like this is americana yeah this is unusual this helps us say that our story is different yeah we're going to be going out we're not going out to just make a sort of quaint another quaint english movie we want to we want to give it a little bit of balls and a bit of scope and we want to make we want to you know and and, and and roger had grand ideas about and I think you can see in the film, some of the shots are super wide. So it is, again, it's like big, wide landscapes of the sea, of the whole of the front, you know, um, uh, not 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 small English contained world, but grander. So um, anyway, so this is a, a great find for us, this cinema. The only problem was the interior of it was very derelict and it didn't really have... Uh, what we needed in terms of a playing space for the sort of foyer so just quickly just 10 doors down there was a building site where an old amusement arcade had burnt down and, and that was like wow okay of course this is perfect let's build our stage an exterior stage like a glastonbury tent out there and inside that we're going to build we're going to build what we can in that space of of the foyer of the cinema to match with the one up the road so when you look at the cinema in the wide shot of the of, of the cinema you're seeing the real cinema which we revamped the whole front put the put the box office and the doors in and did all the neon and everything and brought it back to life and then we replicated that 10 doors down which was we did part of that again and the whole interior so when you go inside 
you're seeing you're seeing her concession stand exactly where Sam wanted it, which is isolated like an island in the middle of this strange world. You see that she's being looked at by Ellis from his office. So it, we made a theatre set, like a composite piece that Sam had in his head that this is how these things were going to work. And he loves symmetry. And we had the grand staircase with, with the uh, an amazing old chandelier that we borrowed from a cinema in Glasgow. Uh, and then we, yeah, we revamped all that. And we built we built the, the grand staircase leading up to the auditorium. But the great thing was in the old cinema, in the original cinema, which was turned, both the ballroom was still there. That was actually turned into a Chinese restaurant. So we revamped that back to back to something, you know, some form of glory. So we put the chandeliers in and the bunkettes and we coated the windows in, in yellow. And we used a lot of mirrors to try and reflect the light of the sea back into the room. And bring back. We put in the dance floor and an old piano and stuff. Just a few bits to just sense the the glory of what was once there. Because it's a sort of it's a it's a it's a story about um, it's a story about healing. It's a story about people helping each other heal. And 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 in a way, the the cinema is 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 like this womb. Is like this place where you can dream and you can heal and you can be warm. I remember talking to Sam about the first time. Uh, when I read the script, I, I remember clearly on our holidays on the South Coast with me and my brothers and sisters, it was, it was um, as soon as it, it rained a lot. And so the days on the sand were turned off and we had to head for something else to do. And one right. of them was the cinema. Oh, cool. And I remember clearly going into the cinema. We're soaking wet in cuckolds and you walk in and it's warm. It's red. It's musty. Uh, there's an amazing smell of popcorn. And there's this glass cabinet full of things that you as a child are desperate to eat and uh, it feels like a dream and then your mum your parents spend some money on you and then you go inside into this dark space with a box of smelly popcorn and some sweets and the lights go down and then up comes you know the galactic world of star wars and for two hours you're sent into some extraordinary experience which oh. is which was really you know, in a, in a way, was was really quite. There was some really extraordinary things about bringing an old cinema, that you know, in a, in a COVID world, back to life yeah. and breathing life back into it. So that auditorium that you see, that was the old bingo hall, uh, and and it was stripped bare, so we had to just completely empty and start again. But um, we managed to go around the building and get any of the old. There was there was lots of old artwork and various. Um, tiny clues about how it was so we managed to, to, to wow. do some research and bring it really bring it back to life so back to some, life. Of the old, <laughs> some of the old people in the town were so delighted because we let them have a quick look inside that's amazing that's so amazing <laughs> so it was what fun a, what a time. gift M mark thank you so much for your insight beautiful work this year on two amazing films um thank you for your time and congrats and some great uh, work. A real pleasure I had a lovely year to be honest. It's great to have. <laughs> <laughs>